good morning good evening or good afternoon depending upon when you are seeing this video uh, what i am going to do is to uh, explain the simple concepts of map reduce in hadoop and we will be looking at some of the features that are being provided by the framework and how to utilize them without much ado let's start what i'm going to do is uh, let me create a directory uh, called master lib first uh, which is primarily used for keeping all the jar files that are required for MapReduce programming uh, what we mean by jar file is if you are familiar with java it stands for java archive files and we will have to utilize so many library files that are being provided by the MapReduce Hadoop framework and we have to utilize them. So let me create a directory called masterlib and also create a temporary directory to download some files from the website and then make some changes. So I am going to create one more directory called um, temp right and then our code which we are going to develop I'm going to keep it inside a directory called passion bytes all the three directories are empty and nothing is there currently right and uh, let me first go to the temp directory and as you can see there is nothing inside and what we are going to do we will download some files from the website and I'm going to keep it in the temporary folder right so uh, please go to um for our sun.com uh, slash uh, YouTube and you will see some files here right so what we are going to do is let's save all these files right uh, and we are going to save into the default downloads directory so save one by one uh, there is mr skeleton.java and I'm going to save that one as well uh, similarly, I have got a partitioner.txt which we will use later. I'm going to save that one. And um, there is a build script uh, utilizing Apache Ant for compiling and running our code in Java. Whenever you write any program or an application, you need to compile it and uh, create an executable and we will use build.xml. And there is a data file needed. I'm going to use a population sample.csv as the data file. And then there is some Unix commands which we will be needing in our process. So I'm going to use that one as well, right? And this is to help you out um, rather than, you know, searching at different places and then getting all the data. And uh, all you need to develop any uh, application in MapReduce is uh, basically uh, this set of files and you can change and create whatever you like to have. And uh, in the temporary folder as we have seen earlier, it's an empty directory and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all these things from the downloads and let me check my downloads folder, um, sorry, uh, uh, from the home directory and then let's see what are the files that are available right so we have got all these files that are there and uh, uh, we have to copy these files and uh, let me just delete uh, the unnecessary uh, files which i don't need for example this mongodb i don't need currently and then similarly i don't need the flume configurations and uh, the conf directory as well so I'm going to um, uh, delete this one and the conf directory as well. Okay, those are used for some separate applications. And if I look at ls, now I have only what is required for our application. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the temp folder and I'm going to copy all these files from the downloads folder into this temp folder. So put a star and then put dot and you can see that all the files are now copied into the temp directory right all right now we are going to make some changes and then we are going to write our application right uh, so the first thing that we need is we need to start writing our application 
and uh, um, which is going to be a MapReduce program and we are going to use the input data population sample.csv. So let's bring this uh, mrskeleton.java and the build.xml to our directory where we are going to write our actual code which is passion bytes. So let's go to passion bytes directory and inside this there is nothing and what I'm going to do I'm going to create a source folder which is going to act as the placeholder for all my source code that we are going to write and we are going to copy the build.xml also from temp directory uh, so I'm going to take the temp directory and then take the build.xml to this particular one so now you can see that I have got build.xml and the source directory right and the source directory is completely empty so let me go inside the source directory and it is a good practice in java to create uh, packages and packages are nothing but directory so let's create mkdir com and then go inside the com directory mkdir passion and uh, go inside the passion directory and then let us copy the mr skeleton dot java into this particular directory right so now if you look i have got the card the first thing that i'm going to do is that since we are going to work on a population sample we are going to change the name of this uh, java program to population count um, dot java population count is nothing but calculating the total count of populations in each state which is available as data in this sample csv file that we mentioned earlier so we renamed that and now you look at population count java and we are going to open that population count java right where we are going to write our code so let's see some interesting things here first thing is that the package name that we have used is not com.ravi if you remember we created com and then passion so first thing that we need to do is we are going to change the name of the package as com.passion and we have got some imports in java whenever you use a framework or a library which is external to the java virtual machine and the default libraries you will have to import the corresponding classes and what i would suggest is you can use the skeleton for writing any code so have these things available as imports on the top of your program and you know uh, as one of the very important property for java the name of the file should be the name of the public class that is going to contain the main and we are going to write our main inside this class and since we named our program as population count we have to rename this class also as population count now let's look at the very basic architecture of any MapReduce program a MapReduce application will contain a map function which can be integrated inside a mapper or you can implement the mapper interface so we are using the approach of using a static class inside our population count class static class is a facility in java to incorporate internal classes within another class and those are also called as container classes so word tokenizer mapper we will soon change the name but for now this is the mapper class which contains uh, exactly one method called map right and once you come down there is an equivalent class which is doing the reduce operation we call it as word occurrence reducer which we are going to change soon which will contain one method called reduce so any map reduce application will contain a mapper class with a map method and a reducer class with a reduce method and the map method is going to take key and value as the primary parameter context is for getting the context of where it has to write the output and then you got the reducer class the reducer class as well will be taking key instead of value it is going to take the values why because the mapper is always spitting out keys and the list of values followed by a shuffle and sort operation within map reduce now 
Once you have the reduce method and the mapper method, the last part of any map reduce application it is to stitch this mapper and the reducer internally and basically you will have an output format class and you will have an input path, output path. This line is very very common and you will be stitching this everything inside your main function. So in Java, population count contains the main function that's why we call it as population count Java, and it contains two classes one is the mapper class and another is the reducer class and we stitch to the mapper and reducer with some additional parameters inside the driver program which is nothing but the main function all right since we call this class as population count it makes sense to remove you know uh, these names and then rename them as the population count mapper right and uh, we come down and then we change the reducer as well as the population count reducer so let's rename both of them as population count mapper and population count reducer right so you got these things uh, available and once you come down when you are stitching this you will have to rename your classes there as well because you earlier told that your name of the program is population count so let us call this as the population count and we renamed the reducer class as population count reducer and we have renamed the 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 mapper class as well as the population count um, mapper right so that's that, that that those are the basic steps right uh, ignore this particular line for now and I am going to comment it out in Java if you put this one that will not be part of uh, uh, part of the uh, code right um, and let us also uh, 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 you know uh, comment out this particular one and we now have got basically a mapper class and then we have got a reducer class and uh, we have combined all the other things which we will be explaining later and as mentioned earlier this is a line where uh, we need to change the reducer class name so we make it as population count reducer so you got all these things your driver program is now set so basically the driver program contains the job and i'm not changing it first demo or if you want uh, you can call it as let's say uh, population uh, count uh, demo and then you give the name of the main class which is population count give the mapper class name and give the reducer class name right and then additionally what are your keys and values that are being output by this particular application now you know that in map reduce the final output is going to be a set of keys and values and you need to mention that key and value accordingly in your mapper function and the reducer function you will see that the same key and value are going in inside there are possibilities where this can be a different kind of class for example uh, int writable and you want to read that as an integer for example and then you can decide what you want to be your output in the main program right so you got the basic places there and then what we are going to do is we are now going to look at the class but before doing that let us do a little bit of build process so that we will do an incremental build to make sure that we are not having any errors so i'm going to the parent directory uh, and go to the directory called uh, uh, passion bytes where we have kept our code and as you can see that in passion bytes you have got the build.xml and the source directory and within the source directory we have created a directory called common com and then passion and then we kept the file called population count of java build.xml is going to be the critical component in our application which will use ant to see whether ant is installed onto your machine or not you can just type ant and uh, instead of getting command not found if you are getting build.xml does not exist uh, or it is taking the build.xml that means the ant is executing for example you can see that build failed um, but at least you have got uh, this particular one and as clearly it is telling that it is 
not getting a directory as mentioned in the lib folder. So what I'm going to do is that, remember we created a master lib directory. So let me go to that master lib directory and uh, uh, our attempt is to keep all the jar files that are needed for Hadoop inside this. How will you know where Hadoop is installed? One good way is just type Hadoop version and then once you look at the Hadoop version, you can see that it is coming from slash user slash lib. So we can, you know, pretty much assume uh, that user slash lib slash user slash lib is containing almost all the things that are required for our Hadoop. So what I'm going to do is uh, we are going to look at the recursive copying uh, file that also kept in the temp directory, which we have downloaded earlier. So we are recursive copy dot text. It is allowing you to find all the jar files from a directory and then execute a recursive CP copy into whatever directories you want. So I'm going to copy this particular command, right? And uh, what I will do is I'm going to change this particular name. So let's make some changes here. Uh, our source directory is going to be the current directory because you are in the master lib directory, right? So what I'm going to do is I will change this as the uh, source directory, the source, sorry, and the source directory is user slash lib where you are going to take all the input path and the destination directory is nothing but your master lib directory, which is a dot, right? And uh, once you did this, you can just copy this particular one. And what we are going to do is by this command, finding out all the jar files in user slash lib Almost all the jar files might not be required, but just to be safe, I'm taking all the uh, corresponding files related with the Hadoop installation and then master lib will be complete and you can use it for any of your applications in the future, whether it is a, uh, you know, high UDF based function or you want to write some additional MapReduce programs. Uh, which is taking some additional inputs uh, like, you know, connecting to a database, etc. So we are doing this particular command and executing this one. So it will take a while. Why? Because all the jar files inside this user lib is going to be recursively copied into this dot directory. And finally, you should be getting almost all the jar files that are in this installation in this application I'm using Cloudera. It can be Hortonworks, it can be MapR, Pivotal or EMZ, any implementation. And if you do an LS now, you can see the complete list of jar files are being copied. So our master lib is complete. Okay. And now we don't have to touch this master lib directory. And let's come back to the place where we copied our code. You can see some additional directories got created now because we had earlier only the src directory and those directories were created because of build.xml. Now, if you recollect build.xml earlier was giving an error that it was not uh, finding the lib directory. And uh, the reason is that you have made a reference to the lib directory. Now, what I'm going to do is instead of this lib directory, we are going to make a reference to the master lib directory and the master lib directory is in the home folder and the home folder in this machine is home slash cloud error and the name of the directory is master lib. So now you made a reference to your master lib directory and we are now ready to compile or execute our program. So let's try now by doing an ant and see whether we are getting any errors or not. So if suppose you are executing the ant and if you are getting build successful or build failed. That means there is something wrong in your code. And as you can see very clearly, set reducer class, I made P and O as capital letters, which is not the intended class name. If you recollect, the name of the class is population count reducer, where P is capital, but O is lowercase. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the source folder, com folder, passion folder, and then take that particular program called population count Java and then come down where you made that mistake and then go to that particular place and then we are going to type the correct uh, spelling and uh, once you come back and then you do an and if you are not getting any error that means your code syntactically is correct yes
it has created a jar file and the generation of this jar file the scripts everything that is needed all are included in build.xml which you can refer to at a later point of time i'm not handling in this session how to write build.xml which is you know uh, a very important necessity that any java programmer might be knowing or should be knowing all right so now your code is correct and uh, it is time for now bringing that population sample.csv here so let me bring that particular file it is there in the temp directory and we will bring that population.csv here and then let us look at the population csv file and understand the data so in any MapReduce application first thing is to understand the data as you can see this data the first word before the comma is nothing but the city name this is an abbreviation of the state we call it as state id and this is really the state name and this is the county within that state and this is the population within that particular county in that state and uh, our application that we are writing now should calculate the total population of each state for example look at this north dakota and here also there is north dakota and here also there is north dakota even though there are different counties now what i need to do is i need to sum up the population of north dakota the last numbers for north dakota and then i need to total it up and that's what the population count has to do which is very similar to a word count program only thing is that instead of emitting every word comma one what we need to emit from the mapper is this state as well as this count so if you look at this line one two three the third word is the state name and the fifth word is the population count so we need third and fifth fields having known this now we can go to the code that we have written earlier and come to our mapper class and inside of the mapper we are going to make some very very simple code so let's come inside this mapper class and let's start writing our code as you have seen key and value are the input and we are ignoring this particular key key is fictitious in this case in most of the map reduce examples key might not be needed in your map but however if you write applications like inverted index etc where you need the key you can take that key as well normally line numbers or offset etc are used as keys and in this case we are going to work with only the value and the value is nothing but the line that you have seen just now in the population sample.csv file that first line is the value right so key is fictitious so what we need to do is we need to read that line one by one so let's do that first what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a java string called line which is the first line and uh, let us read it so value is the one which is containing the string that you need and to make sure that it is read as a string let us do a value dot to string which we are now storing it in a java string object called a line now as you have seen there are some commas inside that line right so what we are going to do is we are going to create a string tokenizer right which is coming from java's util package so you will see on the top java.util.string tokenizer is imported this is how java works whenever you need an additional external class which is not part of the default library you will have to import it and then we call it as st new string tokenizer a new keyword will create a new instance and we are passing in the parameter the line that we just read and we are now asking this string tokenizer to 
separate by commas. <laughs> Again, in the population sample dot CSV, we have seen that the fields are separated by comma. So if there is a column or if there is a dollar symbol, you will have to write that accordingly. If there is space, you can use a tab character. If you want to use a carriage return, you can use a slash r, right? Uh, and, and, and you can create the string tokenizer as you like. All right. Now, once the string tokenizer is created, now we need to parse that string tokenizer by taking the tokens. So, we will did st dot has more tokens. This is a method in the string, string tokenizer class that is provided by Java. And what we are going to do is we are going to do some parsing of that particular code that we have seen earlier. So I have taken the string tokenizer and I'm checking whether it has got more tokens. And if it is yes, what we need to do is, in fact, we can ignore all the tokens, but we are interested in third and the fifth token as we have explained earlier, right? So let's do this thing, right? String, all right? String, uh, first token, which is nothing but the city name, right? So let us call it as city equal to st dot next token. So you got the first token of the line, which is the city. And we are not interested in that. Next, we are going to get the state ID, the two letter word. So I'm calling it to call it as state ID and I'm going to put it as next token again, right? And the third, which we are getting is string state name, which is the most important thing that is needed. Okay. So next token, uh, I'm getting the state name and next is the county name. So string county name and that county name is st.next token. Uh, there are some typos, we will correct it. So string um, next token, right? And don't worry, if you make a mistake, your build, when you compile it, you will get it very clearly. Okay, so string and the last one is count. So let's call it as the population count and we will call it as st.next token. So look at this. Uh, everything is of type string and we have taken the city, state ID, state name, county name and count. Uh, please don't write again more next tokens. Why? Because you will get null pointer exception or we will be you know, getting some errors because the data is not there. So you can see that even though the data is unstructured or semi-structured, while you are reading it, you are giving a structure to it. This is called schema on read. Databases and uh, all the other kind of systems, when writing itself, you need to tell how to write it. For example, if I want to load the data into an EMP table in Oracle, I have to tell what are the columns and what are the data types before I start writing into it. That's called a schema on write. These are all schema on read systems. All right. So now you got these details. Next part is you have to create a resulting object to write your output. As you can see, the previous code from which we inherited this program has got something called a word, right? And I'm going to change that particular word as, you know, state, right? Right, so it's new text, right? And I don't need this particular variable, so I am going to delete this particular line and I need only this state variable, right? And what I'm going to do is, I am going to write that particular tech state value inside here by writing state dot set. State is of type text, which we have just declared on the top. And I'm telling that for that state object, you set the state name, which is the string, right? So you are setting the state name as the value for your text, which is going to be the key. And then I need to get the population, but the population that we have stored is a string. And you mentioned in your map function that you are going to write 
the value which is going to be an intritable. So let us look again at the map function. Even though you are taking the key and value, the output is going to be an intritable. And why the output is going to be intritable? Because as you can see in the later part, the reducer function is going to take list of intritable values. So it is the responsibility of the application developer to give the correct parameters unless you will get uh, uh, some errors. Otherwise, you will get some errors while you compile your program about the data type mismatch. So context is another parameter. And then I'm going to write, this is the place where you are going to uh, write the output. And we have set the state name into the state. And then I need to convert that string count into an integer value and convert it into an intritable. So the way to do it is, intritable is the class that we want. But intritable takes integer as a parameter, but we have got only string. So I have to convert that into string by writing integer dot parse int, uh, which is a Java function. And I'm going to take that particular value count, right? And then finish off my code. So as you can see, we are reading each line and it is in while loop. And this line, each line will be iterated through by the mapper. And every line has got many tokens. And we write the state name, which is taken from here. And the corresponding fifth value, which is the count of the numbers. And now the reducer is very easy. What the reducer has to do is it has to just write the total sum of the values and you have got the boilerplate here already instead of the occurrences of word which was part of the code that we inherited i'm going to write here okay intritable is nothing but the population count this is the total population count right so we are going to write population count and then the list of values are coming from the mapper and we are finding the sum and then what we are going to do is we are going to set the population count variable that we just created with the total that we have calculated across each state. And then we write the key which is coming by default from the MapReduce and then the corresponding result that we have calculated. And in our case, the resulting value is available in population count. Right. So we have written the base class and we already did the stitching earlier. And let us check whether there are any errors. Again, you are in the home directory where your build.xml is there. You can compile and use ant only from the directory where build.xml is available because ant will search for build.xml. And let's type ant. When you type ant, it is now trying to compile the changes that you made into your classes earlier we have made some changes and this shows that our changes are being accepted and there are no errors and we created my hadoop.jar in the dist folder this is what we will be using for running our application now it's time to put the population sample.csv to the input directory in hdfs because mapreduce takes input from HDFS and then writes the output back to HDFS even though the intermediate files are written to the local system. So let's create a directory Hadoop fs minus mkdir and let's create say the pop input as the directory where I am going to keep the population data. By default in a Cloudera virtual machine it will create in slash user slash Cloudera slash pop input folder. You don't need to put any extra characters like slash or something when you create the directory. And then let's do Hadoop fs minus put population sample dot csv to that directory called pop input that we just created. So now as you are aware in MapReduce, when you give a large file, it will be split into 128 megabytes of blocks and then the blocks will be replicated three times as per the configuration and then the data will be written into one or multiple nodes. Name node will keep the FS image, all the stuff. So we put the file now, which is available in pop input. 
You don't need to create an output directory in Hadoop. Why? Because when you run the code, automatically, if the output directory is not there, it will be creating, right? And now we are good to go with executing our code. So let's go to CD dist where our executable jar file is being created, right? And now what we are going to do is Hadoop jar, my Hadoop dot jar. The name of the program is com dot passion dot population count. You have to type it without any spelling mistake, which is the name of the program. And then we have to give the input folder name and then create a output folder name called pop output. So if our logic is correct, you should be getting the population of each state and the corresponding totals. The state name will be the key and the corresponding total population will be the value. So let's execute this and allow MapReduce to execute the program in parallel. Uh, ignore the interrupted exception coming in a Cloudera machine and that uh, nothing has to uh, it has nothing to do with the execution of our card as you can see the map and reduce process is already uh, on the way and uh, it will go through the series of maps followed by shuffle and sort and then finally you are going to have the reducer completed and the best way to check the output is Hadoop fs minus cat and as you know the output will be in the pop output folder because that's the parameter that we have given earlier and then if you want the output you will be typing part dash r dash one two three four five zeros okay the reason is that always the map reduce output will be creating the output by default into either a part dash m or part dash r with this certain numbers uh, we will see shortly that at v, in which case it will create M. But let's now see whether our logic is correct and everything is there or not. Uh, there is no such directory. So I think there is something wrong there. So let me just check again the code that we have done there. And before that, let us do a Hadoop minus LS on the pop output directory that we have created. And then let's see what is there. Uh, as you can see, there is uh, part dash r dash zero zero uh, available. So let us check the uh, command that we have given earlier. It is, yeah, there is a spelling mistake. So it is pop output. And then let's take the uh, result. And uh, if you look at that, brilliant. It has created each state and the total population, right? Um, a beautiful program where, you know, if you have got census data or data similar to this, you can easily write a map reduce which will run across you know uh, all the states all the counties and then will calculate it efficiently so that's the fundamental idea of map reduce and now it's time to you know play around with our map reduce code right as you can see mapper after that shuffle and sort and then in conjunction to the above steps the reducer all these got executed and you got the output Let's go back to our code now, right? And let us make some changes. What I'm going to do is that now, let us uh, make a change in our code and I'm coming to the program here and intentionally let us comment the reducer class. So I'm putting a slash on the line where the cursor is blinking and I'm selecting it, this line, where your set reducer class was set earlier I'm commenting it and let's see what's happening. Before I'm running it again, I'm going to delete uh, the my output directory, which is uh, pop output. So pop output directory, we are going to delete. And uh, once we are deleting it, we are going to do the and again, which is compiling my code against the latest source because we changed the source by commenting out that line, the reducer class line. It is created and then I will go to dist folder and then use the arrow keys to execute the same command that you executed earlier for your MapReduce program. And let us now see whether there are any errors in our MapReduce application if we are not providing any reducer. 
Um, as you can see, it seems there are no errors because the map and reduce process are already on the way. And uh, let's wait for some time until the code is getting executed fully. Yes, it has executed. And now let's look at the Hadoop FS minus LS in the in the pop output, right? Uh, whether something is created or not pop output um, and uh, if you look at the output again it created part dash r dash five zeros which means that you know um, there is no change at all in the output or output creation uh, as far as the MapReduce framework is concerned but let's look at the data inside this particular directory and let's see what is happening if you are looking at this output as you can see if you do a cat you can see that key is getting repeated which is not the intended result in the earlier case when map and reduce were working in conjunction with the shuffle and sort you got the output where each state was only once and what's the reason why you are now getting all the states repeated look the moment you write the set reducer class commented the MapReduce framework understands that this user is not intending to use his or her own MapReduce reducer class. Instead, the user wants to rely on the default reducer provided by the MapReduce framework and that default reducer is called identity reducer whose only responsibility is to take what is given by map and spit it out into the output collector. So, if you disconnect the reducer class and if you look at the logic of the map, map is just reading the state name and just printing out the values, right? And it is not combining the sum code is there inside the reducer. And in this case, since you are not using the reducer class, the sum is not performed and that's why you are getting this and this is illustrating the idea of identity reducer again let's go back to our screen uh, our, 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 our directory where we have the code and let us delete uh, the output again uh, because we have now um, uh, clearly understood what's the purpose of identity reducer and what it does right and then um, let's do one thing and let's now create or go back to our code and then let's do something. So, uh, once you come back and then once you look at the code, look at that. Whenever you are commenting out a reducer class, you are going to get identity reducer. Now, let's see something else. We are uncommenting it. That means, uh, uh, okay, before we are uncommenting it, let's illustrate another idea. I am now uncommenting this line and I am going to tell that, okay, set number of reduced stars is zero. Okay, is there any difference uh, between commenting out set reducer class and setting the number of reduced tasks as zero? Let's see. We come out and please observe the code. There is no reducer class and we are explicitly saying that the number of reducer tasks is zero. Let's come out and then compile the code again, right? So, and to compile, and let's see whether there are any errors. No, syntactically there is no problem at all. And then let's go back to our folder where we are going to execute the code, dist, and let's execute the code now. We already deleted the output folder, right? And let's execute the map reduce again. The execution shows that a job is going to get kick started. And it seems uh, there are no errors in this case as well. The map and reduce process is running. And uh, yeah, it created the output. And let's see now what is there inside this 
part uh, or, or or inside this particular directory uh, pop output right and once you look at the output you can see a great difference it is not part dash r dash 0, 0, 0, 0. instead it is part dash m let's see what is there inside this right so uh, uh, let us execute hadoop fs minus cat in order to see the output instead of r now we have to type m and then let's see what's the output that you are going to get so it is uh, almost exactly same as uh, the previous one only difference is that as you can see now it is giving the result into a folder called part dash r is not available but part dash m is the output that you got so what we can understand from this is when you set number of reduced tasks as zero that's an indication or a direction to the MapReduce framework not to provide even the identity reducer which means that no reducer neither identity reducer nor your reducer class is taken into effect and the output from the map is spilled out so if explicitly you want no reducer to run at all not even identity identity reducer put that number of reduced tasks as zero all right now let's go back and let us delete the uh, output directory again for the next iteration and uh, let us now go back to our code right and then let's make some more changes inside our code what we are going to do, do now is uh, we are going to take the code right and uh, let's come down and let's uncomment the reducer class because we already learned this concept right and let's comment it out because we are not going to have this and when you don't write it it is the decision taken by the map reduce framework to identify the number of reduced tasks okay it will it will decide it and then it will set uh, the output into uh, a convenient part dash r dash star 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 all right now you may uh, want to make some efficiency for this particular code by efficiency what we mean is that you know if suppose when map reduce framework is distributing the data assume that one node is containing multiple counties of florida based upon the logic of our code the node is going to read the lines and print that state and the count as many times that state is appearing on that node you can bring little bit of efficiency by summing out the same state name in the mapper itself so that the data that is being received by the reducer is little less than the other way where you are sending the same state name multiple times and you are doing the reduce operation in the reducer. So basically what we are doing is that we are telling mapper to do an extra work and that extra work is exactly same as what reducer is doing but only thing is that rather than waiting for the reducer stage or reduce stage we are doing it in the mapper immediately after the mapper itself that process is done or can be done in map reduce framework by using a combiner class and i am uncommenting that line now so we have got now a mapper a combiner then shuffle and sort and then reducer and what you achieve by this is efficiency and less network traffic compared to the previous way why because combiner performs an addition whichever is possible on the same key immediately after the mapper stage itself right uh, if you run this particular code i'm not running it you won't see certain difference between the original code that we have executed first because 
internally the compiler class will get executed and you are going to get the same result only thing is that it will be faster you can put some debug lines inside and then you can check it by yourself right the next concept that we are going to look is what will happen if i put number of reduced tasks as zero and then if i put a combiner class is there anything that is going to happen reduce the task is zero and you are saying that in the combiner itself you add the values so we should not be getting multiple rows for the same state if this is getting executed as the result of the mapper why because we are telling the mapper to do the combination right combiner right so mapper should combine the same state in itself and then it should give you the result unless that state is in another node so if you are executing this what is the expected output that you are going to see it's interesting if you are running the code and trying it you can see that combiner will not be executed and that illustrates another idea in the map reduce framework that if there are no reducers not even an identity reducer then combiner will not take into effect the reason is combiners are meant to help reducer and if you are saying that there are no reduce at all even no identity reducer then combiner will not be able to help anybody and hence the combiner will become ineffective so there is no point in putting a combiner class if number of reduced tasks is zero all right next let's look at what will happen if i write number of reduced tasks as two and if you execute this particular call what you can see is that in the output folder pop output you will now see two files one will be part dash r dash some number and another will be part dash r dash some other number that means two partitions are created so number of reduced tasks that you put there is deciding the number of partitions or the outputs that are being created now what will be written in those it is using something called a default partitioner that are coming with map reduce and the default partitioner is a hash partitioner a hash partitioner in this case will do an alphabetical sorting and some data will be put it into the first partition and the second data will be put it into another partition so the next idea is is it possible that you can redirect the output into a partition in the way that you want yes that is possible and that is done by a partitioner class so next let us do that what i am going to do is i am going to bring or i am going to go to our uh, directory called temp and we have got a boilerplate template called partitioner.txt and what i am going to do i am going to call it as uh, okay uh, state partitioner for example let us write a state partitioner and uh, we call it as state partitioner.java okay and uh, we will edit that state partitioner.java now the boilerplate is there as we mentioned earlier the name of the class should be the name of the exactly the file that you have created so it's state partitioner and it has got a default method get partition and the boilerplate is dividing the partitions depending upon the vowel but i don't want that vowels this time instead what we will do is that if the state starts with florida then we will put it into the one of the partitions and otherwise we will put it into another partition and you can see a modulus function is being used and if number of partitions is equal to two you will have either zero or one as a result of this function so let's modify this and what i'm going to do if it starts with state florida is the name of the function okay and i'm going to change this name of the function as well as starts with state florida oh, 
starts with states Florida. Right? Uh, and we are going to check this. Of course, we don't want the key to be null. And we are changing the key to uppercase. And we are taking the character at zero. Actually, we don't need that character, but we need the string because we are going to search for entire string. So, to uppercase, after that, I am going to do a trim. Trim in Java is a string function which is allowing you to remove the left gray, left bracket, uh, sorry, left space and the right space if there are white spaces. And this data is going to be string. Okay, and let us call this string as string name. And what we are going to do is, we are going to delete these lines because this is the old logic. And what we will do is, after checking the state name, after, after getting the state name, if state name dot equals Florida, return true. Else, we are going to say return false. Right? So, if you want to control the number of partitions, you need to override a method called get partition from the partitioner class that you can see on the top in Java. The class extends and then you can override the method. And inside that you write the logic of how you divide your data based upon the keys. And you tell that, you know, what you want. So, you are now dividing it depending upon whether the state is Florida or not. And you are just checking whether it is Florida. The reason why we are converting to uppercase is that if your data is containing lowercase Florida, if you are not converting everything into uppercase, then lowercase Florida will be written in a different way than the uppercase Florida. So now we are writing this and the state name equals Florida. Since you have converted into uppercase, it is not making any sense to compare it with lowercase Florida. So we will write here Florida. Why? Because you already converted into uppercase on the top. Okay, these are the possible logical errors that can happen. All right. So you got the state partitioner. And now I am going to go to the passion bytes folder where our code is there. And our code is there in uh, uh, CDSRC and then CD com and then CD passion and then LS. Here is where our code is there. And I'm going to copy the the code that we have just now written, the state partition dot Java here. And since it is in a package, it makes sense to change that package name on the top also as package com dot passion. Right? So now you got the state partitioner class and what we are going to do now is we are going to open the part population count and where do you do the stitching in the driver or in the main right. So we are coming here and uh, since the number of reduced tasks equal to 2 we can now easily write what is the partitioner that you want. So the way to do it is job dot set partitioner class right set partitioner class type of the uh, partitioner class and you give the name of the partitioner class state partitioner is the name of your class you got the partitioner class and you have included it in the same package and now can you come out and then go to your source go to your uh, parent directory where the build.xml is there and now let us type and and see whether there are any errors yeah there is. So, if state name equals Florida, I have forgot to put a particular bracket there. So, let us do vi source uh, slash com slash fashion slash uh, state partitioner dot java and then come here and then let us do that typo. Uh, let us correct that typo uh, by putting one more bracket here and then come out here and then we will do an act to make sure that everything is perfect. All right, and now let's delete. If at all we have not done it earlier, pop output.
yeah it's already been deleted and now let's run this particular code by going to the dist why because dist is the place where the executable will be created so use your arrow keys to select the previous command if you're using linux or unix and then run this particular output so as uh, if, if, if if our logic is correct and if everything is okay we should have two outputs and all the population results which should be ideally one should be uh, uh, related with Florida should be one and all the others should be in the other partition. So this shows how you can control the output. All right, now do a head of FS minus LS of pop output and let's see what is there inside pop output as expected now you can see there are two part dash r is created there are two partitioners because you have mentioned that there are two partitioners and then let us do hadoop fs minus cat of what is there inside part dash r dash one two three four five um, and then let's see what is the output inside of this as expected, you are having only the data about Florida, right? And look at that, it is a lowercase, uh, capital is F, but the remaining a lowercase, but you did an uppercase there and you converted it. That's why uh, you are getting the comparison correctly. But we are not changing the key, so it is printing the key as it is. And if you look at this one, you will see all the remaining uh, states except Florida are being printed inside this and there should not be Florida coming inside of this. It's not there. So that's the concept of a partitioner. So what we have seen is a mapper, a combiner, a partitioner, and then we have seen identity reducer, right? Actually, uh, let's look at the output that we have created earlier. Um, so that's available in uh, uh, Hadoop FS um, minus ls and then let us look at the directories that are available and uh, we have put the pop output as our directory right so hadoop fs minus ls uh, pop output uh, slash part dash r dash let's say uh, one two three four five for example and uh, let's just uh, do a uh, cat of it and then see what's uh, being created here uh, as you can see uh, this is the key and this is the value. Similarly, Oklahoma is the key and this is the value. Uh, as you can see that the, the, the output which is always generated by the map reduce reducer is uh, by default uh, a tab or space separated, right? Um, how can we change this and uh, instead of this space i want to have my own separator uh, or we want to have a comma or a colon as a separator so let's do that as the last part of our exercise so what i'm going to do is um, let's go to uh, uh, the uh, passion bytes folder and then um, uh, let's look at the code which is there in com.passion and the name of the, uh, the, the the Java code that we have written earlier is population counter Java. Again, come here uh, immediately after you are creating the configuration or, or, or you know a little bit down after you create the configuration basically. Uh, we can write a couple of lines here which is there in the, uh, the, the URL that we have mentioned earlier for our sun.com slash YouTube. And uh, if you look at that, there is uh, something called a custom separator.txt. And what you need to do just to copy this, basically, it is setting some properties to the uh, uh, properties to the um, uh, you know MapReduce configuration. And we copy that, and uh, we come back to our code. Uh, and uh, inside of this, we are going to paste that particular uh, part that we have copied, and. Um, uh, these are all commented, just uncommended. And you can see uh, we are setting three different values. It is, you know, just to support 
multiple versions of Hadoop uh, and then we will set these values. It doesn't affect your MapReduce program at all and uh, we have got this text output format dot separator text in some versions it works and uh, there is this text output format dot separator uh, and there is a key field separator. So we are now telling that whenever the output is generated use this comma as one of the separator file right and uh, let's come back and then come to our parent directory where we are going to uh, write the uh, write, where we are going to compile the code and then go to our passion bytes folder right and then uh, let's first delete the output that we have created Hadoop fs minus rmr and then uh, the pop output is the directory that we have clear created earlier right and then let's do an ant to uh, create the new distribution based upon the changes that we have just made all right now it is successfully created and now let's go to dist and then let's run one more time our uh, population count application uh, by giving the pop output since we deleted that directory as the output directory and then let's execute this so a pop input as usual contains our input data and uh, uh, the MapReduce job is getting kick started uh, basically even if you made some spelling mistakes in the configuration files it will not give you an error why because uh, it is just a set of some properties but you have to make sure that you are setting the actual properties that we have mentioned earlier um, uh, which, which, which is there uploaded into the site as uh, the separator text. Right, the uh, application is now running. Uh, it seems everything is okay. And uh, let us now look at the output one more time, which is there inside this uh, uh, part R0001. Remember, uh, earlier we have created the number of reducers as two and we applied a partitioner. There is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and the one file that is created and we are just looking at the output of one uh, and as you can see now the separator is a comma right and uh, let me do one thing uh, and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy this particular file into a, a file called uh, 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 population sample dot cfsv let me delete if it is uh, existing and then what I'm going to do is let's copy this particular output file into a local file called uh, uh, population result dot csv. So we call it as uh, part dash r dash 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and I'm first copying into local uh, which is now taking the output from the map reduce and then we are moving into the local and then let's move this particular file name um, into pop sample dot csv or let's say pop uh, output dot csv because it's a comma separated value file right and let's double check it uh, yes all the results are available now and what i'm going to do i'll use filezilla and copy this population output dot csv to my local web because i want to use an analytical tool and on the virtual machine i don't have any analytical tool installed my r studio is installed on the local uh, uh, operating system so this is on a virtual machine so i have to bring that data from the virtual machine into my local system so uh, let me start filezilla right and uh, let's make a connection uh, to the virtual machine um, by connecting to the ip right and then we have the population.csv if you look at the last modified date the population.csv is there and what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy that uh, pop output.csv uh, into this one so as you can see pop output.csv is being copied to my local next we are going to run the r algorithm and creating a bar chart to show that population output right so if you want to see that r algorithm again go back to that site and there is a file called analytics.r and uh, it's very simple i'm using a library called ggplot2 in r uh, r has got a lot of libraries and packages and this is one of the libraries that will allow you to create uh, graphs and then i'm going to read the table by selecting a file using the uh, 
you know file selector finder in mac as well as file explorer in windows and then uh, i have got two columns state and population and then i am creating a bar chart so let's copy this particular uh, data and uh, uh, what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to paste it onto r code so let's come to r studio uh, and then uh, let's paste uh, that that code that we have just copied uh, uh, which is using the uh, you know uh, the code that just mentioned right so it's asking the um, uh, the the file chooser window and i'm giving pop output.csv as the output uh, it seems there is some error there let's see what's the problem um it is populations and it is using the state name and the population and uh, uh, it is reading the table and the separator yeah the separator is wrong so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a small change into the into that code uh, and i will make my separator as comma because we have already created a file with comma as the separator so uh, let's do that so comma is the separator now and then let's paste this particular code and again run this algorithm uh, uh, by giving the corresponding file as the output absolutely fantastic the result you have got it and now you can publish it and then you can share the url to anybody by clicking on the publish button into our pubs uh, it is giving you some values of course it is a matter of uh, writing some code in order to manage uh, the axis and uh, uh, you know the the values that you are seeing uh, you can zoom it and uh, you can see to whatever uh, extensions that you want and then you can see this particular output uh, and and, and uh, you know uh, basically uh, uh, create any kind of visualization right so that's a simple example uh, we stop here uh, what we have covered in this session is uh, uh, the concept of mapper reducer and the driver then we have seen what's meant by identity reducer how it's created uh, when you are mm, uh, 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 commenting the line set reducer class then we have seen explicitly how to make uh, the identity reducer also ineffective by setting set num reduce tasks as zero and uh, we have seen that the output in that case would be part dash m dash something which means that there is no reducer at all involved then we have seen what's the concept of a combiner and we have used a combiner along with a reducer and when you set number of reduced tasks as zero even the combiner is not getting executed why because combiner is a utility class for helping the reducer and if there is no reducer at all not even an identity reducer then no combiner will be called then we have seen the concept of a partitioner and we have created partition based upon the state florida in the example and then we took the output and uh, we have copied that output to local for analytics and then we created a bar chart so that uh, completes the basic stuff and the fundamentals of all these different components which are very commonly used in MapReduce. Thank you for listening.